Chapter 31 You are now listening to The Chapter of the Architect with DJ Architect. What's going on, party people? What's the deal? Once again, want to welcome you guys to another chapter of The Architect. This is chapter 31. Today, I got my special co-host, Big Burgers, and the place to be. Burgers, what's up, man? Nothing much, nothing much, man. This is the same old, you know, glad I'm breathing, glad I woke up this morning with the Lord's blessings. Yeah, man, with these fires. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys don't know what's going on, today... Uh, is December 9th, and we've got these crazy fires that have been started because of the Santa Ana winds. They've been kicking up, and they have been devastating uh, Southern California. Ain't that right, Burgers? Yeah, that's right, man. It's like destroying everything. Houses, live animal, uh, animals such as horses and, you know, just... I mean, yeah. it's just ridiculous. My coworker showed me this video of this individual. I guess it was one of the fires that were further up north in California. I guess this individual was driving down the highway, pulled his vehicle over to the side of the road, and was picking up wild rabbits and pretty much saving these rabbits from getting burned alive. It, it's crazy. And, and I looked at the video and I say to myself, Wow, that that person is a much bigger person than me. I wouldn't right. even have the attention to detail to be looking or trying to scope out or wild say, animals. Right. I'd, I'd be too worried about, okay, how the hell am I going to get through these fires and on this highway? And old boy got out of his vehicle and was saving these wild rabbits. And my coworker was like, man, you know, uh, he said something along the lines of, you know, why why would he even save wild rabbits? And then he, he said, you know, uh, human beings I could understand. And I turned to him and I say, look, man, some human beings I would not even save. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But but animals, the, they're innocent. In, innocent creatures. You know Correct. what I mean? Some human beings need to, not Wake that I'm up. sitting here and, and trying to judge, but some human beings need to be burned alive. You know, through the judgment of not me, but somebody else, man. Some some of these motherfucking people are, are just on some shit. But yeah, man. Uh, big uh, big shout out to that homeboy that was out there getting out of his vehicle and helping out these animals, man. Yeah. That's uh, that's something to be applauded. You know. Right. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, if the fires are that close and it's that dangerous, I don't even know if I'd have stopped. You know, I'd have been like, wow, man. You know, I'm trying to get to my family. Right. Yeah, I ain't man. thinking about animals, but you know what? The Lord works in uh, mysterious ways. So, you know, I mean, God bless that gentleman that did that. Yeah, man. It was crazy because <clears throat> the fires started around that area, uh, around our area, around 12 o'clock, 1230 in the afternoon. That's when we started to see the smoke. So I got in contact with my wife and I was like, hey, look, you might want to stay at your sister's house because she lives uh, in Encinitas. I knew for a fact the 15 was going to be closed. Uh, the 76 was, was going to be closed right? Uh, because of those fires. And I was like, well, you know, uh, I didn't want her stuck in that traffic. So I was like, just go ahead and stay with your sister. And I told my mother-in-law, she was around our area. And I said, hey, where you at? No, I'm at the mall. She was doing some Christmas shopping. I said, do me a favor. Go back home, hunker down, take care of the dogs. Something happens. I'll get off work. I'll come pick you guys up if you guys, uh, if our area was to be evacuated but yeah, man, many people ended up being evacuated, and man, it's it's uh, heartbreaking. I got a, a text message from my homeboy, Donnie, and he was telling me that his wife's co-worker, her home, burnt down, mm. lost everything. That, I, you know, man, my heart goes out to these people that are in that situation. A lot of individuals are out there in, in these shelters right now, so close to Christmas, uh, I, I man, I couldn't even imagine uh, losing your home, home right before Christmas. It's right. crazy. Yeah. Um. As a matter of fact, uh, me and my wifey, uh, she was getting off work. I picked her up or whatever, and one of her homegirls, one of her uh, establishments or residents, was in danger. So she was like running out the casino. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Like literally, I'm I'm dead serious. Like running out. You know what I mean? Like, oh, go take care of the dogs or, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, her dad wasn't at the house. His dad is like out of out of the state, out of the, he's somewhere visiting somewhere on vacation or something. And he was like, 
Yeah. He called her like, you need to get to the house and yeah. take care of it. Yeah, man. So, yeah. It's wild, man, how Mother Nature does not forgive, does not stop, does not wait, whether it's a hurricane, a typhoon, a tornado, an earthquake, uh, wildfires, uh, tsunamis. It's just... It, when it's on, it's on. Yeah, man. Mother Nature is an unforgiven element and... Uh, when uh, she is in your path, you need to get out of the way. That's that's crazy. But on a on a lighter note, let's uh let's talk about the holidays, brother. Christmas is right around the corner. Yes, sir. Have you finished you all your Christmas shop and you still got some shopping to do? I'm actually I'm I'm finished, man. Mm-hmm. I did it quick, you know, because I'm that type of guy like if I don't Buy it right now. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna drink it out, right? Or I'm gonna gamble it out. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, I got the chunk of change. Hey, let, let me go me ahead ha- and get it on. Let me ask you something. Do you do the most of your Christmas shopping online? I have recently since. I mean, in the uh, previous years, I haven't. Right? Are you? But this year, doing, I do you, I did like everything except for a couple items mm-hmm. for the wifey. Yeah, man. I think that's the way. That, that's the, what I'm gonna do this year. Is just do it. Online? Online, man, yeah. I'm not trying to stay on the negative note, but obviously you're aware of the stabbing that happened... At Walmart? At Walmart. I am. Ladies and gentlemen, so we live in a pretty good neighborhood. I think it's the... Temecula is like one of the top safest cities in the nation. You know, it's a pretty, pretty good neighborhood, brand new homes quiet neighborhoods the majority of the individuals living in this neighborhood are working class a lot of military prior military veterans things of that nature individuals working for the government so you wouldn't expect the situation when you hear of an individual getting stabbed what do you what information do you have regarding that burgers I, I heard at first i heard it was over a parking complaint if somebody was they were beefing over a parking spot but then i heard no that wasn't the case it wasn't the case so what do you know about it so i mean you know it's what i heard was the gentleman that got stabbed was sitting at a light waiting to make a right hand turn into the walmart parking lot the gentleman behind him didn't see the pedestrian that was crossing through the crosswalk. So the vehicle in front had to wait. Had to wait. And the, he threw his hands up. Like, like, why are you not moving? Right. right. So they both, that's where the uh, confrontation started from right. what I've heard. So apparently the gentleman, the younger guy that got stabbed to death, actually, he made a right or whatever and went into the Walmart parking lot, unaware that the gentleman that was behind him in traffic was following, following him. him. So he followed him and he got he grabbed the gentleman from behind like in a chokehold and stabbed the boy in his heart and told the girlfriend, you're next. Wow. But then this is the crazy part and this is how this guy's gonna beat the case. One, he has PTSD. Two, after he realized what he did, He tried to help the gentleman that he stabbed, and the crowd was, like, pushing him away, like, no. Get out of here. So a lawyer is going to find a way to wiggle out of that. I don't, I don't, I don't foresee PTSD getting a, being the getaway card, man. It might be the insanity. Sometimes you snap. Yeah, but, but I remember you and I, we were having a conversation with Kenny, and we were saying, those are the individuals that, you know, the difference between the individual that has the thought process to say, okay, look, I'm having a bad day. Let me mm-hmm. not do what, you know, my instincts are telling me to do and, and stop my vehicle and get into a physical confrontation with this guy. Regardless if it was PTSD, listen, man, I, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not buying it I'm as not a judge. Buying it. You, hear, you hear what I'm saying? I don't care. Questions of uh, were you on or off your medications? If you were... On the medications, uh, why wasn't the medication working? If you were off the medication, then why, why you were you off help? the medication? Right. Why didn't you seek right. more help? Look, it's sad. It's sad that a human being get you know loses his life because an individual doesn't know how to control his temper. It's and sad, and I don't want to hear it because uh, you know mental insanity or an individual has PTSD. I, look, man, you and I both went to Iraq. Correct. Right. 
that I will not utilize that to get away. Right. As a, a, scapegoat. a scapegoat. Right. Let's say I have PTSD. You can't put me in a mental institution. <clears throat> but you everyone has to be accountable for their own actions, man. That's correct. You hear what I'm saying? I, I, I don't buy it. homeboy. Listen, here on earth, you're going to have to be judged. And after this. And uh, it's all said and done, and you were buried six feet deep or cremated. There's a bigger entity that you have to face, you know what I mean? face yeah. and be judged by. But <clears throat> I don't want to hear that bullshit. All oh, you know, PTSD made me do it. No, nah, man. And so because of that, I should not be held accountable. Bullshit. Those, bullshit. Hey, I call bullshit too. I mean, bullshit. because like me and you deal with the shit too. But bullshit. You know what? I've been pressed to points where I was ready to rip somebody's head off. But you know what? You got to just be like, no, nah, yeah, man, man it ain't the, worth it. The calmer mind must and has to prevail. Exactly. And that's what makes us human beings. <sighs> that's and, what separates us from the psychopaths and the animals, man. And you know what was crazy? Um, It's been a lot of different events happening, you know, at my wife's job and I'm talking about men, women, whatever. And my wife was like, how are you so patient? And it's crazy because I am so patient nowadays. Mm. I used to be like a live wire, dog. You touch me and I'm burning you. You know what mm. I mean? Like, And I said, because you got to start thinking, you know, that you're not the only one in the world going through situations. Right. And I also think what I keep in the back of my mind, and this is real, in my mind at least, it doesn't have to be for the listeners or you yourself, mm. right? DJ Architect. If you look and think you got it bad, there is always someone else out there that has it worse I than agree. you. I agree. And when you can think that in your thought process, it calms you. In my mind, it does. Like I said earlier, like a few seconds ago. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. know, you know the tool that I utilize whenever I'm in a bad mood or uh, I come into contact with a jackass out in the street driving around who Runs has, road. has road rage. Yes. You hear what I'm saying? You of know, course. this is, this is what I say to myself. I said, I said, look, self, if you go down to this individual's level and you do something stupid to spark or antagonize the situation, that's already bad. You have to think two, three steps ahead, ladies and gentlemen. And that is the truth. Once again, that is what separates us from the animals. And I'm not talking about nature's creatures. I'm talking about us as being idiots, fools, ignorant, psychopaths. I say to myself, if I stoop down to his level and I let the best of my rage get to me, I'm going to put myself in the same in boat as them in a situation where now I have painted myself in a corner and he, I'm going to do something, he's going to react to it, and now here he comes. Now what am I going to do? You and I being prime Marines, we know how to get down. There is no fight. There is, I'm going to put you down so you can't get up. God forbid in the middle of that I black out or and you black out and you do something that you, you weren't able to control, and now... You're facing jail sentence. You're facing murder, manslaughter, and you're sitting in that tiny cell saying to yourself, why couldn't I just ignore the fool for three to four minutes and keep driving and go home to my family? This I, this all could have been avoided if I would have taken the high road, had a little bit more patience and not stoop down to this idiots level. level exactly that's what that's look how many people right now female and male are sitting in jail uh doing time many many decades of years over a situation that could have been avoided whether could have it been diffused yeah, whether it, it was because it was an alcohol related incident whether it was a situation where a female was involved and two uh, males felt oh uh, i gotta be the bigger one uh, I'm going to show this guy, you, you don't do that. And, uh, you know, this is my female. How many individuals are sitting there in the cell smacking themselves in the ass saying, 
why was it worth it? What, why am I here? Why did I do that? That is the one thing that prevents me from behaving like an idiot. I say to myself, I've got too much to lose, man. I don't want to put my family in a situation where they they have to see me every other weekend or I can no longer provide in a mandatory fashion. I can't take care of them. I can't go outside and eat whatever I want to eat or visit whoever I want to visit. You know what I mean? So, ladies and gentlemen, and this is for all the meatheads out there as well, man. Listen, just have a little bit of patience, man. But, you know, put yourself in that situation. You either react to the actions of a fucking moron and you put yourself in a real, real bad predicament. It could it, Listen, it happens. It happens. Every day. So, listen, it's the smartest thing to do is just to avoid it. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, a lot of that comes from growth maturity. I remember when I was young, I was a knucklehead, used to hang out with, with the wrong people in the wrong locations. We've been there. But you, you learn from it. As an adult, you mature and you say, well, look, man, we just have to avoid that whole scenario, period. You right. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's still individuals out there, and I don't understand exactly what you're talking about, because you can go back to New York, I can go back to Youngstown, and you still got the same guys you hang hung out with, excuse me, doing the same damn thing. Right. And, you know, and they look at you like, because you really don't want to hang out with them. Oh. Like, you, what, you think you're better than me? Right. It's not about right. that. Right. I ain't. I don't know what you've been doing for the last three years, so right. what? I'm going I'm to sit here and be in a car with you and get cooked? No, no way, man. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But and, I was always taught, yeah. let me, architect, let me, you never argue with fools, man. Correct. Absolutely, man. You just keep your mouth shut and keep walking away. Right. You, you Off know, top. Uh, hey, man, <clears throat> you know, it's getting, this is the Christmas season, so we're supposed to be jolly and all that. Mm. Let's bring it up, baby. You know, let's talk about what's going on. Eggnog you know, what we for doing? everybody. Eggnog with some rum for your monkey ass. Remember, we used, to, we used to drink the eggnog and the irk and jerk? Yeah, man. And get hammerjack. Eggnog is a shit. You like eggnog? Oh, yeah. Remember, we used to drink it together. Yeah, man. Eggnog is the shit. Mix it with that brandy, baby. Absolutely. Uh, what are you going to cook for Christmas there, burgers? Oh, I'm going to keep it simple, man. I don't want to keep doing the turkey thing, man. So. Hey, man, listen, I love turkey. I do, too. But after, you know, maybe two, three days, uh, even though we're switching it up with sandwiches and whatever have you. Right. You just get tired of it, man. Turkey sandwiches, oh, turkey soup. Goodness, man. I yeah, mean, it's yeah. a million things you can do. Yeah, you, you know just get I mean? tired of it, man. Hey, ground that up. Let's make mm. some turkey burgers. Mm. You know, I mean, yeah, I understand. Yeah, man. So what are you gonna do for what are you gonna cook for Christmas, man? I already got my ham, man. I'm gonna do a ham. Glazed I bought a, honey ham. Mm-hmm. A glazed honey ham. You gonna you gonna Just buy to, it? You're gonna cook it. I'm gonna cook it. Okay. I don't I never go out and buy things, man. I don't I'm not that guy that believes in I don't even like going to the grocery store. What do you mean you like on going holidays? To Oh, because of the people, the amount of people. It's not about the about. It's because I think that all holidays that you should be at the crib. You shouldn't be stressing someone else out. And I don't even know why establishments are even open on those holidays. On the holidays, I mean, I hate when I go in there because it, it's been times when I went into the jump off, and all I needed was like cream of mushroom. Right, right. Mm -hmm. When see small things like that are, are no big deal. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, but you get assholes. I mean, I don't know. I, I never believed in going out to eat mm. on holidays. I mean, unless it's a super special event. Right. You know what I mean? Something you've never done before. <clears throat> like Sherman uh, said, so I can understand that. Right, right. Hey, man, remember, remember when you were a little kid and the toys that we used to have growing up? What were some of the toys as a child that... If you can recall, if you could remember some of them toys that you wanted as a child. Remember some of those toys you were excited the over? The Transformer action figure joints. Or mm. I remember one year, Mom, I forget the name of that big-ass base that they had. For the, the Transformers? For the Transformers. And my mom bought it for me. <clears throat> I, mean, I don't remember that one. It man. was, um, I forget the name of it. It, wasn't, it was Optimus Prime's joint. And it was big. And you unfolded oh, it. Oh, it was his trailer. Right. Yeah, I think it was his trailer, yeah, right? She, yeah. yeah, my mom got me that. I mean, I didn't want that shit, but mm. I was like, hey, you know, I'm not one of those gentlemen that be like, 
ungrateful like right. what the fuck you buy this for me right, for right right you were just happy with it happy yeah hey, listen man there was this this little um you remember the uh the RC tracks they used to have oh hell days? yeah the racing tracks Ooh, the racing tracks i used to love you got to press the button yeah. like you're pulling the trigger on the gun yeah, and shit so check this out there was, there was this one particular game hang cl- I, I remember i was cl- cliffhanger nah i remember begging my mom this this toy right and what it was, it was called Flying Devils. I don't know if you remember or not. Mm. But it was two airplanes, and it had the concept of the RC track, right? But these two plastic airplanes, one was yellow, one was red, and they would hang by these little uh, metallic wires, right, that were that were flexible. So they were... Oh, and they yeah. would bend and... Yeah, move. so the base was the middle and the base would rotate. So every time you pressed your RC trigger, the base would turn and there you go, you would have these flying devils flying around. You hear what I'm saying? These yeah, little yeah. airplanes fly, flying around. And my mom got it for me. I was so happy. This is the crazy thing about it is we grew up... Uh, very humble, you know what I mean, in a small two family house, and you needed space for these two Tracks. airplanes to actually spin around. I didn't have the space, man. Like I would hit it, and it would like bump into my bed or bump into something else, and I was like, man. So I really never got the chance to utilize it, man. But nonetheless, I I, I appreciated my mom so much for it, man. Another one that. It, not necessarily for Christmas, but I think it was another toy that we, man, we waited forever for this one toy. My mom used to work <clears throat> for this factory that manufactured medical equipment. There was this guy named Milton. This person, Milton, used to have this van, and he would go up to Manhattan. And he would purchase all these gadgets, toys, computers, whatever have you, and he would go to this factory, and while the you know, employees were at lunch. He'd open up his van. He goes, yo, I got pillow shams. I've got cologne, perfume, gold. He would just sell everything out of his van, you know? Right. And I remember Nintendo. That's like a conflict of interest, isn't it? Well, ah, whatever. I mean, yeah. I guess the people, you <laughs> I mean, know. I'm just joking. But Nintendo had just came, came out. Ooh. And I remember me and my brother begging my mom, hey, mom, talk to Milton. Talk to this guy. He got to get us this Nintendo. Every my mom was like, I got you, don't worry about it. Every single day, it must have been for maybe two to three months, I would sit outside the the steps to the house, waiting for my mom to come, running up to my mom. Hey mom, did you get the Nintendo? Did you get the Nintendo? Nope, not today. Milton ain't got it. And I say, yo, after the third, fourth week, I, I'm thinking to myself, yo, man, fuck Milton. Let's go to KB Toy Story or Toys R oh, Us yeah, and KB. pick that shit up. You know, she's like, nah, he's going to give us a discount. At ease yourself, young buck. We're going to wait. And I was like, fuck that motherfucker. I want that damn Nintendo. But finally, I had I had given up, man. I was like, she ain't going to get us no damn Nintendo. Finally, the day come, man, and she gave, she gave us the Nintendo. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, man. And she gave it to us with the cartridge. Remember Kung Fu? Of course. Oh, man. We was ecstatic, man. But, you know, I grew up in the days with Atari Yes. Coleco Vision. Coleco. In, in television. A lot of y'all young cats, y'all ain't going to know about that. But, yeah, the you know, Coleco. Yeah. That's like, I think that was like one of the first ones before that's when, Atari. That's when Donkey Kong came out. Hell yeah, Donkey Kong was Donkey shit. Kong Jr. and all that shit, man. Super Mario Brothers. That was on the Nintendo joint. Man. Remember when you had to put the, the fucking, it looked like an eight track and shit? Mm-hmm. With the, uh you put it in there, and if it wouldn't play, you had to push it to the side and yeah. put like a piece of paper in that bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or, or with the Nintendo games, man, you'd have to take it out, blow it, blow, blow it. it. <sighs> yep. Put it back in there, try it again. You'd smack in the side of the Nintendo case. Hell yeah. yeah them I used to just... play that Top Gun, too. Hey, man, remember? Trying remember... to land a plane on the oh, aircraft carrier. Oh, yeah. Hey, that, I love that game. I never could game. land it. I love that game because you had to get your speed and your altitude right. Right. I remember that game. That was a good game, man. Man, you remember that game, Akari Warriors? Yes. That was another dope game. Uh, Contra, of course, mm. Contra. You know, with the left, right, left, right. Up, down, BA, up, down, B, A, B, A. Layup, select. Come right on. Start. Yeah. Oh. And you had unlimited ammo in that bitch? Man. Of course. Man. Cat look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Remember, he used to be shooting that motherfucking mm-hmm. M60? Like, hey, man, another good game. 
uh, which I love, which right now they, they call them the beat em up games. They're hard to find now, but you remember Double Dragon? Of course. Man. That was my shit right there. Double I swear Dragon. to God. Double, Double Dragon. Dragon. Renegade. Bad Renegade dudes. was hard. Bad. Oh, <laughs> yeah. man, you remember that? Bad dudes, you was beating the shit out of people. <laughs> yeah, man. I love those games. I used to play all them joints. Man, dumb, dumb, dumb. Uh, listen, I think we, we grew up in a different in, era in, in a good time. I mean, don't get me wrong. The games that are out now are, are off the hook, man. But back then, Frogger, I, 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 we were just happy and content with some real simple shit. Frogger. Remember that? I remember that, man. You'd be in the toad trying to get across. Uh, on the lily pads Yeah, and shit. man. And they'd yeah. be like uh, little logs you could yeah. jump on. And, <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. Remember that game Spy Hunter? Yup, Spy Hunter. Oh, hey, my man. favorite, mm. Galaga. Uh, hey, man, I remember Galaga. Um, Galaga was my Galaga, shit. Galaga, Pitfall. Pitfall. But even missing Mr. and Miss Pac-Man was mm-hmm. joint, jumping off. Mm-hmm. But that Gallagher was my favorite, man. Especially nah. when you get the double the double planes at the bottom and you just... Oh, yeah, you put in that work. Let me tell you, probably my my favorite game of all was uh, Metroid. Oh, I remember that. On Nintendo. Oh, my God. I would spend... I would beat it many, many times and just go back, and start playing. it from scratch, do it again. I love that game. That game was off the hook, man. Metroid. Metroid off the hook. I'm trying. You got me thinking now. Cause yeah, I'm thinking it's about mad games. games. I'm thinking about oh, ghost. What was it? Ghosts and goblins. It was it. I think it was ghosts and goblins. Ghosts and goblins. Oh, that man. My brother loved that game. Man. Oh yeah. When you was you 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 were a knight and you had armor and you would like hit him with a spear. Right. Uh, Castlevania. Castlevania was fun too with mm. the vampires and shit. Mm-hmm. Man, ladies and gentlemen, we going back in the time thinking about these games. Then was the real games. You know, in New York, Techno Bowl. Ooh, Techno Bowl. Yes. Dope, dope, dope game. Base- Always pick Bo Jackson, the Base- Raider boy. Baseball All Stars. My goodness, man. Sweet. Yeah, so I grew up in New York, man, and I remember the first days that it would start to snow. Huh. And you go outside, we build a snowman, we have uh, snowball fights. Oh, hell yeah. Man, those were the days. You know, ladies and gentlemen, now that I live out here in California. We don't get um, no snow. We guess it was one time, I think, in my 12, 13 years of living here that I, that we had snow. And people were going bananas, man. Wrecking and shit. Yeah, you know, idiots don't know how to drive out here with, with snow on the ground. But people were going out, building snowmen and all this. But what was my point? Okay, look, so... Having the snow and all that was nice, but I do not miss the mornings waking up early because you had to shovel. You had to shovel a path uh, so your mom, you know, can get out and go to work or when you were able to drive because you know how they had the snow plows. Of course. So the snow plows. They Don't clean, have your car on they, that joint. Exactly. They clean the streets, but all they would they would lock in your vehicle. So then you'd have to shovel your vehicle out. And then you would start your vehicle, had to let that sucker warm up for 10 minutes. Because when it started up, it was, the engine sounded mad. You know, the engine was like. (laughs) Hell yeah. (laughs) Didn't even want to start. Sound like a dog woofing and shit. Yeah, man. I do not miss those days. That's for sure, man. And the cool thing about Cali, here we are in December. And. We walk in with in a t-shirt. It's it's like eighty degrees, but man, I'm I miss that east, man. I'm not lying. That's why I'm gonna move back, man. I need seasons, brother. Look, I I appreciate the fall weather just because the change in the leaves, the gold color. That's something nice to see. That you get that chill in the air. You're able to rock gear that you don't rock here in California. Your your hoodies, your leather jackets. Triple your, fat goose, your shirlings, and all that. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. If you do wear that here, it's probably gonna be for one day. The next day, it's gonna be not as cold. So you know, you're not gonna be sweating out there like a fool trying to look fly, right? But uh, yeah, man, that's the one thing I do not miss about uh, New York. I do miss the food, though. Oh yeah. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, these individuals, and I know I got we got peoples. You know, from here in California that are listening. But, hey, I, I just got to tell you guys, 
if you're from California and you haven't been out to the East Coast, you guys have no idea what you're missing. I think the closest thing that we have here in California is Jersey Mike's. And it's because of maybe perhaps because of the bread. The bread. Yeah, the, yeah, bread, the bread is, is the key. Is, is, the, is probably the same texture as the bread out in New York. But it's not nowhere near because you got to wait for Jersey Mike's to open up at 10. They don't sell any breakfast sandwiches, right? So now let's say you go over here and somebody says, yo, I want a breakfast sandwich. Let me go to Subway. And the damn egg is already made. The thing is like foam. It's disgusting, man. In New York, you can go to a delicatessen, get a poppy seed roll with two eggs, bacon, ketchup, salt and pepper, and a coffee for maybe three fifty. Delicious. And there was this joint in Unidale me and my boys used to hit up called Jim's Deli. The best hero sandwiches, period, man. You could you can get the breakfast sandwich in the hero with two sausage patties. They used to have one called the Hungry Man, which which was ham, sausage, bacon, egg. <laughs> oh my yeah. goodness, man. Cheese, forget about it. You used, my goodness, man. Hey, the I, chicken cutlets, the chicken parmesans. People have no idea, man. People, they, the, the potato conditions, the Jamaican beef patties with cocoa bread. Listen, the Chinese food, the Chinese food is off the hook. I remember the first time I took my wife to New York and I was like, hey, look, you're going to taste the Chinese food and it's going gonna, it's gonna to knock your socks off. She goes, like, whatever. What she goes, whatever. We had it delivered. Half a chicken with pork fried rice, french fries, uh, spare ribs. Egg foo young, crab wrangle, the whole nine. My wife was eating it. She was like, and then we had the duck sauce in packages, right? The soy sauce and the whole nine, some Italian bread on the side. And my wife was like, I can't believe this tastes so much better than anything that's out there in California. We had so much left. The next day, she put it in the microwave. She was like, it even tastes better the next day. Yeah, it does like, because the I sauces. Was, listen, I said, I told you. I said, I told you. They, they, these pickup sticks here in California is not going to fuck with no Chinese food on the East Coast. They really ain't. Hell no, man. Now, let me tell you something. The closest thing that I found that's pretty good Chinese food here in uh, Cali is Chin's. But those, it's like a, a restaurant chain. But oh, that's not, over there right there by the yeah, mall. Yeah, right. It's not a lot of them. They're very few between. But that is elegant dining because, I mean, you, you go in there and the napkins are made of cloth. And then, you know, the bill's going to be pretty pricey, but it's outstanding right. Chinese food. But nothing like New York. You can go to any Chinese rest, Chinese food spot, restaurant in New York on the corner, and, and it's they, 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 they're going to be anything out here in California. That's the truth, man. Well, you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Because, I mean, you know, I'm from Youngstown, northeastern Ohio. I'm only like six hours from New York. So I understand 100%. Because if you think about it, even the beef taste, the hamburgers taste different. On the east, I don't know what it is, man. A lot. Of I people think it's say, because it's more grass fed. They're trying uh, to do grass fed here, brother. But I'm telling you, well, concerning and let's not. We didn't even get into the pizza, man. Oh, oh man, man the, pizza? the Italian food. Are you serious? A lot of people say it's Bellaria because of, Pizza, Youngstown, Ohio, baby. If you go through there, mm, a lot wear of people a bulletproof say, vest and <laughs> grab a pizza. <laughs> a lot of people say. <clears throat> that it's because of the water or whatever have they, you. I, I don't know what it is, man, but it's just a different taste. I don't know. It is a different taste. It I know is, that for sure. It's much more delicious in my personal opinion. That's for man, damn sure, man. Let me tell you about this joint, right? This is like a mom pa joint, and they out of business now, and I don't know how the fuck that happened. It was called Roller's Place. Mm. You can get breakfast. They were open for like, on certain days, they were open like breakfast, dinner, or some days... Dinner, lunch, mm -hmm. or, you know, they would alternate the days that they would be open. Right. Man, me and my dog, I think it was like one of the New Year's is like, hey, let's stuff our stomach before we get fucked up. Mm hmm Excuse me. Mm hmm And I'm like, oof. All right. Brother, it was, and it was silly. It, it, it looked like almost like a, um, a buffet. Mm hmm But they'd be like, what you want? So you pay the cashier. You tell her I want this, 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 and this, and pay. Oh my God, man! Oh, so they had like the food already pre cooked. No, it, was it wasn't pre cooked. There? They was cooking it in front oh, of you, but okay. they was cooking it as people was coming through. Like, yeah, yo, man. yeah, and that's and that's what I miss about New York I'm delis. Like, yo, and New York delis, 
there'd be a cat on the register, and sometimes the delicatessens would be so small that they would have the flat iron grill. Right. And he'd be right be like he'd be right behind you. See him grab some butter, put it on it. Yeah, start butter start frying, frying up. up, and boom, he is cracking eggs. You can see him put the salt pep, and you're like, man, you know that thing is freshly made. Unlike this bullshit, what's a sandwich spot that what they always sell these motherfucking sandwiches? What what Subway? Subway. Yeah, man, the egg is already. They grab the egg already pre cooked, put it in the goddamn bacon microwave. already pre cooked. Yeah, man, they already have. The slices cut. They already know how much you are gonna get. In New York, they grab the big ass piece of turkey or ham and cut they it. Put, they put it on the slicer. Right, zoom, slice it, zoom, slice it, zoom, slice it, zoom, slice it, zoom, slice it. Put it on the bread. It. Zoom, zoom, yeah. zoom. Put it on the bread. Zoom, and you like, yeah. That's pack what it I'm up. Talking about, yeah. Pack it up. Pack it in. Let me begin. Hell yeah, yeah. for real. Like, give me that real. Yeah, right man. There. Yeah, man. It's for a big. Real. It's a big deal. You know. um Check this shit out. So my my little baby sister and shit, Tata, she came out here in um, I think it was like July, maybe. Mm-hmm. I forget when she came out of here last summer and shit. She always tried to make a trip out here, you know, to see her big brother or whatever. Mm. And I I called her. I said, Hey Tata, I need you to do me a solid. She was like, What you need? Mm-hmm. I said, I need you to buy me a half a sheet of Bellaria pizza. Mm. This is what I want on it. And she was like, well, how am I going to do that? I was like, fucking figure it out. <laughs> Yo, <hey. laughs> and guess what? Carol, my wife, never tasted this shit. Mm. And that she was like, oh, my God. The pizza, the dough. Check this I, out. Oh, my God, man. Check this out. She put it in her fucking, in her bag, Yeah, dog. I believe you. So check this out, right? In New York... They used to have Jack in the Box in New York. The crack, yeah. yeah. We used to love and still do love their tacos. Oh, you know they're the greasy. Tacos, they are good. They off the hook with that sauce. Woo! So slowly but surely, they started closing down these Jack in the Boxes in New York. And, you know, we had one that was probably four blocks away from where we used to live. So it was none for us. You know what I mean? I remember one time... Our parents had gone to El Salvador for 30 days, and they left us at the house, and they was like, yo, here's a certain amount of money. You guys spread it good because this is what you guys are going to be eating on. The last, I think, two days, my brother said to me, hey, we got so much money left. I think it might have been like $20. We got peanut butter and jelly, mm. and we got some bread, and we got some milk. And this is how much we got left. We had like maybe twenty, twenty five dollars left. That's a lot back in yeah. those days. Yeah. So he said, "What you want to do? You want to go and buy some more, you know, ham or turkey and cheese, so we can make some some other sandwiches, tacos, or you want to spend it all on them damn tacos?" I said, "Yo, we got to go for them tacos." Yeah. Man, he was like, "Bet we got in our bikes, we rode the bikes to Jack in the Crack, off of Old Country Road by the car wash." Man, we ate like pigs that night, you hear me? <laughs> so years later, these jack-in-the-boxes, they start to close down, man. So we're finding ourselves, we have to go, you know, now we're able to drive, right? So we got to go further out. We're going to these far-out locations. I remember the last time, that the, the last location that they had was out in Queens. And, man, I, I, I remember driving out there and saying to my brother, damn, dog, we got to drive out to Queens to get some jack-in-the-crack tacos. So I had moved out to Cali. My brother's still living in New York. And my brother, I'm I'm visiting my brother the next day. My brother says, hey, man, bring me some tacos. I said, bet. How, mu- how many you want? And this dude said, I want 50. Whoa. I said, okay, I got you. So I had bought this little, like, you know, aluminum cooler type thing, you know. And my wife and I, we went to the drive-thru in Jack in the Box. And the lady's like, how can I help you? I said, hey, I want 50 tacos. She oh. goes, 15 tacos. Okay. Anything else? I said, no. 50. I said, 50. Five, zero. She goes, oh, and I hear you say, ay Dios mio. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the she fuck? She goes, can you pull over to the side, please? I said, yeah, no problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They big ass bag of tacos. So here I am. 
lugging this little cooler of 50 tacos. I'm stinking like tacos, man. I brought them back. And you know, and my brother and his kids, his wife, they they beating up these tacos, but it's not the same like as as when they're freshly cooked. You know what it's I mean? Not, you still not. got the crunch and the whole nine. But Jack and the Crack Tacos, man, we was driving many, 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 many miles to get some Jack and the Crack Tacos, man. Yeah, of course. That's the thing, man. You know, when you, because I'm from the inner city too, you know that. And it's a couple spots out there, man. It got like, okay, let me ask you this. I've never been to New York, but I'm about to be there this spring, summer for sure. Already know that. Do you guys have spots where, you know, they got like fish markets where Yeah, man. Where it's fresh fish. Yeah. And then you can have them cook the fish on the spot for you. Oh, with like I'm fish and, like fish and spit, I'm, I'm, uh fish and chips on the spot. I'm trying to think, man. I know out in Freeport they had many fish markets and that was right by the ocean. There were many fish restaurants adjacent to those locations. None that I that I can remember that, okay, hey, give me, let me get, you know, four snappers, and they would cook for you. They would cook them for you on the spot. Not that I recall, no. Yo, Not that I recall. Well, that's the thing about- I'm sure they do, but- Well, yeah, yeah. You, know? you got to find them, and I'm trying right. to find that out here. So I remember my grandmother lived right down the street from the fish market, right? Mm. So now you can walk in the fish market- and you can buy it fresh and mm-hmm. take it home, or they'll have it battered and ready to rock right there. And you mm-hmm. be like, "Let me get two pieces of walleye." And people don't know what the fuck walleye is. That's mm-hmm. like the best fish ever, freshwater mm-hmm. fish. I used to fish for the shit myself. Never caught one, mm-hmm. but I was trying. Be like, let me get two pieces of walleye mm-hmm. and fries. Hey, Amen. And there you go. I'm sure that's got to be delicious. Yo, oh, me, man, yeah, on the uh, spot, dog. Let me, let me tell you this story, man, because we were talking about Freeport. Let me tell you this story real quick before I forget. So it was a bunch of my homeboys, right? My brother, myself, my homeboy, Frank Revelo. Frank? And, the yeah, Frank I know? The Frank you know. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, my love, brother. So uh, I believe it was uh, Danny Roman, maybe Donnie. Uh, I'm not sure if Danny Jimenez was there. I'm not sure. Uh, probably not uh, Danny Jimenez, but... So maybe Ray was there. Anyways, Frank had gotten permission to drive his dad's van. And, we, you know, we were just loaded up. Yeah. You know, my we were just loaded up on a van and we start driving through Freeport. You know, you know how guys are. Yo, let's, you know, let's, let's drive let's around, man. Let's 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 see what, you know, we could find the whole nine. Right. <laughs> Push. So, <yeah. laughs> it's number one right there. So baby. so we're driving. And Frank decides he wants to make a U-turn, so he makes a left-hand turn. And we had just passed the parking lot of this. It, it was like in a, a bank or an abandoned bank parking lot, right? Right. So you ever see those parking lots that have the two poles on adjacent as, as, as you're coming into the, the driveway of the parking lot? And in between those two poles, there's a chain? Of course. Right. And the chain is like a bright yellow, so people right, can right, see. Right, right, right. Like, don't go right, through there. Right. So Frank is is going straight, and he goes, you know, hey, we're going the wrong way. Somebody tells him, you'll bust the UE. So he makes a left, and then he he starts to make another left to go into the parking lot to, you know, come back around, right? <laughs> now, as he's making the left into the parking oh lot, God. the headlights hit the, the yellow chain link. The chain link rope. Yeah, yeah. All right, the chain. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. Why Russians hit me, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, yes, we so. see we see the light hit the bright yellow chain, and we like, no! Boom. <laughs> no! <laughs> and <laughs> I think we might have scared him, you know what I'm saying? Because we all yelled, yo, no, no, no! And as we, we the moment we screamed... He guns it. He his foot, he broke his, his, his foot. His foot, his foot <laughs> guns on the on the accelerator. <laughs> <laughs> and the goddamn chain burst. exploded. Yeah, and then Frank is hitting himself on the head, saying, "Dude, what the hell? No, what did I do?" And we was like, "Yo, we told you no." And he was like, "I thought y'all told me go." And we was like, "Nah, don't try to play it off. Don't try yeah. to play it off. You knew you fucked up, homie. You fucked up." <laughs> 
Yo, the whole grill was shattered, Jacked. man. That thing looked like it caught the uppercut of his life. <laughs> and um, That's what's yo, up. this dude did some slick shit, man, because apparently I think his dad didn't need to utilize the van the next day. He parked the van all the way in the back. You know what I mean? Because he had one of those driveways with the garage in the back. Right, I think, gotcha. I, if I'm not mistaken. Like a born style. Right, yeah, so boom. So he had parked the van all the way back. And him and his cousin that day took the van to Queens and got it fully repaired. His dad was none the wiser. Never found out. Wow. So, Frank, if you're listening to this uh, chapter, man, chapter 31, this is the one we talking about where you ran your dad's van into that chain link fence that shit was hilarious man we had a lot of good times yes with frank man and uh damn bro just good times fellas good times you know what i'm saying yeah frank frank the shit man that's my dog too you know what i mean we hung out you remember yo if you want to talk about some crazy shit then i can i could start rocking it right now man Mm, what's up this story is unbelievable Mm. unfucking believable man Mm. all right I ain't disclosing no names on this one. Mm-hmm. Because this one was crazy. Okay, so it's me and my three other homeboys, right? We out in Old Town, California, right here in Temecula, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we getting hammered as fuck. You already know what it is. It's pussy time, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm single, so I ain't tripping. I mean, my wife know everything about me, so fuck that. Uh. But uh, one of our homeboys, man, he was my neighbor because we had the condo. Uh. You know, Italian guy, you know, he get drunk, he get a little wild. You know what I mean? I know but, what you're uh, talking about, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> we out in Old Town, and he like, man, I got to piss. And we like, all right. So, now keep in mind, we walking down the, the main strip, so you can't just piss off in uh, in areas or right. whatever like that. Yeah. So, he was looking for a spot. Now, we walking down, there was this wooden cabin on the left. Now, he could have easily just decided to go on the side of the cabin, but listeners, listen to this shit. This guy was so fucked up, he elbowed out a window what? of a fucking spot that was for lease. What? Elbowed it out, climbed through the window, took a piss in the corner, and then walked out the front door and locked it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, this is decades ago, right? Decades nah, ago. man. What? No, nah, that got to be, what I do, 13? That got to be like maybe five. Wow. Five, six. Wow. Tops. Well, well hey, long, but long, I'm just saying. Long time ago anyways. Yeah, well, I mean, he. I ain't saying no names, so, but. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, that's, well, let me tell you, let, let, let's tell another story. What's up, sir? Ladies and gentlemen, we gonna, we gonna, I'm going to tell you guys one of the adventures that me and, well, you know, Burgers and I, we've been friends for many, 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 many years. And uh, well, like a like a decade and a half at least. Yeah, man, easy, man. So, <clears throat> drinking beer, That's absolutely. So I just I had bought this, you know, back in the days. I believe this is two thousand one. I had just bought this Honda Accord, right? <laughs> I went out to Iraq. I paid the sucker off in four months. I paid it off because of that good combat pay. I come back. We hanging out with the fellas. I believe it was you, me. Montano, who else? I think it was just it was just us three. Baby Tooth wasn't with us. No, he wasn't. He wasn't with us. He wasn't with us. So we go down to this place called uh, Pacific Beach PB. We chilling. We partying. We having a good time. We drinking. And you know me being the 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 driver. You know I was sober, obviously. And Montano and Burgers had gotten destroyed. Lit, destroyed. Drunk off the ass. And before we hit the highway, Burgers goes, hey, man, do me a favor. Stop at 7-Eleven real quick. I'm hungry. I want to get something to eat. I'm thinking he's going to get some chips or something like that. This fool ends up getting these buffalo wings. And he's on the passenger seat. I'm driving. And I'm not paying attention. And I'm and I'm telling him, hey, man, <laughs> do not get any buffalo wing sauce on 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 the seat or the floor, you know, utilize the napkins carefully, eat carefully. Boom, we get on base, we go to sleep, we wake up the next morning for PT. So, you know, burgers is still with me, right? So we go in the morning to, to go do physical training. I open up the door, 
to my, you know, damn near brand new car and I could smell old as chicken like they had been sitting there for hours. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then he opens up the passenger door and starts laughing. And I said, yo, what the fuck is so funny? And then I look, I stick my neck over by the passenger seat, and there's nothing but half-eaten buffalo wings, buffalo sauce all on my, on my mat, on my seat. And this fool's over there laughing. I said, what the fuck is you laughing at, man? I shouldn't make your ass lick that shit up. It was, I, that, that shit was crazy, man. But I made you pay for that shit, didn't I? Yeah, I paid for it. Se- se- well, in other ways, several other times I made you pay for it with baby tooth. Oh yeah! You wanna, oh yeah! You, you, you want, did you, you greasy <laughs> motherfucker? Two times, <laughs> two times. Dirt bag motherfucker right here. So you want to tell? You want to tell the first? There was two times I got you back. The first Baby time tooth? with the burrito in his truck, and the fucking and the, thing on his bed, and then the avocado burger on his bed. This motherfucker. <laughs> so right here, so yeah. what happened? Yeah. <laughs> you want to tell that story? Yeah, I tell it real quick. So. The wing deal, you know, I ain't mean to do it, man. I was just fucked up just for the audience, you know what I mean? You know this how this dude is always fucked up, ladies and gents. Yes. But um So we had plans to go to TJ that evening, right? To Juan to Mexico, right? Yeah. So we go down there, right? We had a caravan of vehicles heading down to Tijuana. We was like five deep in Baby Tooth's truck. Mm-hmm. And we stopped on the way to Mexico at a fucking gas station or right. some shit. And this gentleman right here, DJ Architect, he ain't no saint, all right? Yes, I am. So he, ladies and gents, so he he decides to buy a goddamn um, a bur- tostada. What no, did like you buy? A, a burrito. A burrito. He bought a burrito. It had like avocado and shit in it, right? <laughs> so I didn't know what was going on. You know, we all down. We on our way. We all drinking on our way. Baby Tooth, you know, he was a sober gentleman. You know, we try to drink responsibly. Mm. We did have beers in the car, so who gives a shit? But <laughs> we riding down. Now, Los, I mean, architect right here, decides to not finish his fucking burrito, and he put it on the ground in the back seat of the truck. Yo, that, that that's true. And but But then I didn't end up going with you guys to TJ. Right. So he ended up getting dropped off at another spot. I forget what he was doing. You know, that's his business. We'll we'll lead that, whatever, whatever. That was years ago. Now, everybody got to get out to let Mr. Architect out. That's right. So as we getting out, everybody is crushing this damn burrito. burrito Put and some hot them, sauce on my burrito, baby. Dropping it off <laughs> and mushing it into... Baby into, Tooth's carpet it, into the fabric of the, and and his truck was nice. It was a nice truck, and so once again we come back from TJ. Everything all right? Next day, Baby Tooth get mad at me <laughs> like that was your burrito, and I'm like, dude, I don't eat avocado. I don't. I wasn't eating your burrito. <laughs> all right, so we'll leave that at that. So that's one setup by Mister Architect. That's right. You got to pay the price. Right. Second time. We was all hanging out in Baby Tooth's room. And what happens? Mr. Architect decides to chill, chill, and chill. Actually, Baby we, Tooth wasn't there. We, he wasn't. We had been. It was we, me. We you. had been partying. It was me, you. I don't know who the third person Castanata. was. Castanada. Oh, yeah. The pig in the human's body. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that good, was yo, a, he was a good, good, good man though, man. Good people. Yeah, he had a pizza face, but, yo. You know I mean? <laughs> good people though. So we was out <clears throat> drinking, partying, and we had stopped by a Alberto's, I think. Right, Mexican right. Uh, food. Yeah, joint. And, and I ended up getting a, a cheeseburger or avocado burger. You got to have a fucking avocado burger. A heavy avocados, ladies and gents. So once again. We stopped by Baby Tooth with one of our homeboys. We stopped by Baby Tooth's room to see where Baby Tooth at. And Casti- Castellano was his roommate. And he was in there. And he goes, all right, well, Baby Tooth ain't here. But come on in, fellas. I got some beers. We was like, well, of course. We're going to drink some beers with you. So we sitting there. We cracking beers. And I sit on Baby Tooth's bed. And I start eating this avocado burger. You know what I mean? I I was so drunk. I had passed out on his bed and didn't finish the <laughs> didn't finish the avocado burger. Ain't and that a uh, bitch. yeah, man. Also, I woke up 
And I was like, oh, shit, man, I got to get to sleep. I, we got PT in the morning, man. So I went, I left the burger right there. Uh, I guess, uh, you know what I mean? While I was sleeping, I, I slept on the burger and it would, went and it, it fucked up on his pillow. There was avocado on his pillow. I mean, there was avocado everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, and guess who got the goddamn blame? So, Baby Tooth ain't talked to me for like three months thinking that I was the guy. And I'm like, dude, I don't eat avocado. <laughs> so, Baby Tooth will be screaming on burgers. I know I was with you. I know I was with you. You you fucked up my bed and all now I had to get buy a new bed sheets. And I'm sitting there rolling, cracking up. And I was like, yo, that's what you get. Yeah. You fuck around, man. I was like, man, fuck that. Fucking buffalo wings. And by the way, we call Baby Tooth because he was a grown man, but his teeth was like a, a fucking quarter inch big. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah. like somebody had sawed off yeah, half sawed his, tooth. Off his front teeth. Yeah, for real. <laughs> he a cool cat, though, man. Yeah, he was a cool cat, man. Yo, I miss those days hanging out in the barracks, man. Yeah. That shit was hard. Oh, you weren't shit, there that time man. when we almost banged out with the other barracks, huh? Nah, what happened? With Cotto and shit? Remember nah, Cotto? Yeah, I remember Cotto. Big yeah. Cotto or Dirty Cotto? Big Cotto, not Dirty Cotto. <laughs> it was two Cottos, but the, the one was Dirty Dirty. That <laughs> motherfucker stay dirty, man. Nah, remember the dude? No, who the fuck was it? Who the fuck was it? Then we went to TJ one night. I forget homeboy's name, man. He was a cool uh, white dude, man. And I remember I was everybody was passed out in Mexico and shit, and he hit me. He was like, Harris, wake up. Mm. He was like, man, I don't want to get jumped by myself. Hey, man, that's not a safe <clears throat> place to fucking get no, drunk wasn't. either, man. I forget his name. He was a blonde mm. head dude. Mm. What was his name? He was cool as fuck. Mm. But I remember, man, um, yeah, we was in the barracks, and these cats wanted to bang out. Brock, uh-huh. Brock was with us. Oh, I remember Brock. Yeah. Yo, yeah, we you did know, a song with the dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to think of his name for a second. Yo, you know, let me let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, why why we miss, you know, the barracks life, you know, back in the days of being in the Marine Corps. It was a Friday evening this one particular night, and you know, you go to anybody's you, room. You go to anybody's room. It's a catwalk, and you go to anybody's room, everyone's door is wide open. Drinking. Everyone's got a cooler of beer, whatever adult choice they want to drink. You walk in, a, in and out. you just walking in and out of people's room. What's up, y'all? Clank, clank. What's up, y'all? Going to the next room. What's going on? It must have been one o'clock in the morning when we all decide. It was must have been like everyone on the same floor. We all decide, yo, let's go to TJ. Let's go oh, to Tijuana. Yeah. Bet. It was five to six vehicles deep in, in a convoy rolling down to Tijuana at one o'clock in the morning from Oceanside, from Camp Pendleton to TJ. That's a good 45, 30, 45. 45 to 50 minute drive. So we were entering... The, we were crossing the border sometime, sometime close to two o'clock in the morning, Oof. and we didn't come back until time for PT. We, no, not even that, because it was a Friday evening. When, oh. when we when we we came out the club, it the sun was up and shining, man. We didn't get back to the barracks maybe ten o'clock in the morning. Oh My yeah, party man hard at the revolution, Ooh, baby. Oh man. Don't, and I'm gonna tell you those mm. damn them 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 hot dogs, man. Well the bacon wrapped hot dogs. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, man. I remember when Casanea was mm. there that mm. night. And you know how it, it's so packed in there, you can't wait for your homeboy. Oh so man. I was standing out front just watching the door. I gave the guy mm. twenty dollars and was like, keep making them. Mm. I probably smoked like ten hot dogs mm-hmm. that night, man. You know, I was dogs off the hook, man. Yeah. Hey, man, did I ever tell you me and Cass almost got into a fight? Oh, Is Cass that, and Yeah, did I ever tell you that? No. Oh, man. So you remember, uh, Net, was it Neto? Neto. Or Nieco? One of Neto, right? Was Neto. It? I think it was so Neto. He was a corporal. Right. Right. Um, <clears throat> so it was me... This is the actual first time we all we all actually hanged out. It was me, you, Montano, and Cass, right? Right. Oh, you talking about when we was Castellano. down in, No, no. When so, he was pulling his meat out shit? Yeah. So we so you guys take me to Tropics out in Vista. No, that's the, that's further down. That's down there in uh It was Tropics. San man. Marcos. Tropics. It is, is San Marcos, right, right. right. It's yeah. San Marcos. So ladies and gentlemen, I had just came from Third Mar Third Marine Division, which is Okinawa, Japan, and this was my second unit. I've been out there for two years. I came to Camp Pendleton, 
And Burgers is, you know, uh, and I, we were in the same platoon. He goes, yo, man, we're going to take you out, boom, boom, boom. And they, we all go ahead, we jump, we jump into a car, and we go to this club out in San Marcos called Tropics. It was just ghetto as hell. <laughs> but so we're sitting there, we're drinking. I was the highest ranking individual in that group. I was a corporal, or you guys were Lance Corporals. So I had, you know, I was like, okay, cool. I'm not going to drink too much. I'm going to keep an eye on these guys. Plus, I had been new to the unit. The last thing that I wanted to do was get in a situation where, oh, hey, look, Corporal Lopez, why didn't you take care of these guys? What the hell? Are you brand new to the unit. This is the way you're going to, you know, report. So I didn't really drink. I maybe drank two or three beers. And Cass and the fellas were getting lit. Yeah, that's what Marines do. They just get drunk. Cass was getting lit, and I was laying back in the cut, and Cass was doing some grimy shit. He was striking out left and right with the females, and I seen the frustration in his face. And this female he's talking to, <laughs> he grabs her hand and pulls out his wiener, his sausage, and and, and puts it in the female's hand. <laughs> And the female starts to go berserk and I grab him by the, you know, the collar and I pull him back and I was like, yo, man, what the fuck are you doing, dog? And he was walking around yo, with his you, meat out. Yeah, what the fuck? He was ripped, ladies and gentlemen. And he turns around and he starts barking off. He goes, yo, dude, you know, you talking to us. I say, yo, man, I'm talking to a dude that's about to be arrested, man. You need to chill out. That dude was wilding the fuck out, man. Yeah, I remember that night, man. That was crazy. Oh, Cass was bugging out. Yeah, you got, I remember you, you came up to me. And you was like, yo, Cass got kicked out. And I'm like, what the fuck for? Mm -hmm. And you was like, this cat had his meat out. He putting his meat on bra's hands and shit. <laughs> and I'm like, you fucking kidding me, dude? I said, well, let that motherfucker stay out there. We ain't, he, we ain't leaving for him. Remember I told yeah, you that? I said, man. we ain't leaving for him. Man, my goodness. Fuck that, bro. because I had puss in my sights. <laughs> You know what I mean? So I ain't trying to be. Hey, but you know what? That yeah. club, that club was a little big. It's wack. ghetto. Because I remember seeing some girls with some. Uh, they had white t-shirts on and they had Kool Aid and Tito stains on their shirt. And I was like, What the? What, what the fuck, fuck is this? Like, yeah. What the fuck, y'all guys bringing me here for? Yo, man, broke ass. Nah, man. Place to be. What the hell, man? You got to tell these dudes, tell the listeners, what's up? When we was down at Margarita Rocks. Right there in Oceanside with the DJ situation. Oh, did I ever tell this story? I don't know if I told this I'm, story. I'm pretty sure you didn't. Yo, so ladies and gentlemen, once again, we in a place to be. They used to have this club out in Oceanside called Margarita Rocks. There was another Margarita Rocks down in PB. Down in PB, and right, that bitch so, really rocks. Yeah that, re yeah, that was really popping. So they was like, okay, let's open up another one closer to the Marine Corps base so we can get more money. So we're in line. Oh, I'm going to tell two different stories. So we're in line, and we had already had our pre-designated cups with our adult <laughs> beverages waiting in line. I think I, what, what we used to drink screwdrivers, or, or we used to drink rum and coke, right? I think it was screwdrivers that night. Whatever it was. So in we, the cup. In the cup. 7-Eleven cup, and we sitting there sipping, waiting in line, like, yeah, what's going on? We And here come the bouncer. <laughs> We I, we didn't even see him. I, I don't know what we was doing, but he just he popped up. You know, he popped up like a damn jack in the he, box. You know what I mean? Like a ghost, <laughs> like an apparition. And he goes, "What's in that cup?" <laughs> I said, "Juice." And because we was close to being, you know what I mean, getting in that line, he goes, "That's not alcohol, is it? You guys can't have alcohol on the premise." I said, no, nah, that ain't alcohol. He grabbed the cup real quick. I said, "Yo, man, why you grabbing my cup for?" And he opened it up, sniffed it, poured out. Yo, we was about to brawl right there. He goes, you guys got to go right now before I call the cops. I said, all right, we out. Boom. Yeah. Got out of that one, right? <laughs> so that was one story. The second story, we, we made it into the spot, and the DJ was a a, a, a real bologna sandwich-eating motherfucker. <laughs> that dude, <laughs> that dude <laughs> was a chicken, the gizzard-loving motherfucker. That yeah, dude was whack as hell. So ladies and gents, this dude is playing reggae dance hall music. Which, it was hey, rocking. He, he was, oh He had man. the dance floor packed. The and dance floor was off the hook. I'm on the dance floor. I'm getting my groove on. He maybe played two reggae songs, right? Yeah. Back I think to it back. was two to back to back. It was two back to back. And, it and, and every, the moment the reggae songs came on, boom, everybody bomb rushed the dance floor. Everyone's like, yeah, it's on now, baby. And... 
And great songs. Those two greats, I think, would have, would have been. I think uh, it was Wayne B- Wonder. B- B- Buju, Bontan. I don't know what it was, but they, he was hitting it. Right after that second reggae song, this fool plays uh, ACDC, uh, Shook Me All Night Long. <laughs> And didn't even mix it in. He just threw it in there like a bad habit. And everybody looked at each other like, what the fuck? So the person, the girl that I was dancing with, she just walks away. And I'm like, this motherfucker fucked up my whole flow the whole night. Now I'm pissed. You know, and plus I've been pissed the whole night because I had this chain and the damn bouncers came up to me and was like, yo. You can't you wear need that to, you chain. You need to tuck in your chain. And I was like, yo. And then I was pointing at somebody else. Like, yo, you going to tell him to tuck in his chain? You better tell him to go tuck, in his, tuck in his chain. So I was already pissed. So when this dumbass, whack-ass DJ did that whack shit, I went up to the DJ. I was like, yo, Burgers, watch this. I went up to the DJ. I was like, yo, you the DJ? And he was like, yeah, like, like you know what I mean? I was about to Like he props. was a supreme yeah, dream like, like shit. He was like, yeah, you know, he was popping his car. Like, yeah, yeah, you know what it is. And all I hear in the background, shuck me all night long. And I say, yo, man, you fucking whack. You whack as fuck, motherfucker. Why the fuck would you do that? You playing two reggae songs. You going to stop me going to play this shit? Now, I love ACDC. You know what yeah, I mean? Don't get me tight. wrong. I love Lock R-Rock. Daughters. I love heavy metal, man. But you just don't do that shit. You know what I mean? The whole crowd just like they had seen they have seen the Exorcist chick just pop off on the on the dance floor. They just disappeared. Everybody <laughs> said swoop, uh. and, the, and 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 I I was pissed, man. And I was like, "Yo, you fucking whack, you whack." They kicked this out. This dude said, "You don't gotta be here. You can, hey security, get him out of here." <laughs> yeah, that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> once again, <laughs> once again, we get we go we getting thrown out this whack ass spot. Yeah. What the hell with Margarita Rocks? That's what them fools is out of business in Oceanside. They really are. Hiring they, them whack ass DJs. Get out of here with that bullshit. Yeah, man. Um, shit, we could sit here like for days telling stories about how we was wilding out and, you know, having fun. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about, architect. Yeah, man. It was uh it was definitely a good time, man. And uh big shout out to all the peoples that that we had those great times with man in the past man big shout out to to Cass to Nunez that's what was that's his name Nunez, Nunez. baby two baby two uh Montano and uh Pacheco man wherever you guys are at man and and then of course my people's out there in New York Big Ray uh Frank out in Houston my brother Donnie Rodriguez and uh oh uh Danny Jimenez and Danny Roman, big shout out to you guys. But nonetheless, once again, ladies and gentlemen, want to thank you guys for hanging out with us on Chapter 31. Uh, by the time this podcast episode chapter comes out, uh, it should be Christmas Day. So to you and your family, your friends, your folks, uh, on behalf of myself, Big Sherman, Burgers, and Kenny uh, and big shout out to Vicky Vic as well, Big Vicky Vic. He, he, Vicky Vic went out to Hawaii, man. He was out there making uh, some things happen. Vic, okay. right now he's on hiatus because he's taking care of some music business. Uh, but from us here on the podcast, a chapter of the Architect, we'd like to wish you and your family a very, very merry Christmas. We don't say that uh, happy holiday bullshit because it is Christmas. So once again, much love to you guys. Thank you for spending time listening to the podcast. This has been Chapter 31. Oh, and before we leave, we did get a call. We did receive a call from that great MC, MC Devastator. We're going to go ahead and leave you guys to listen to this individual with the most skills in the world. Yeah, right. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Chapter 31, and here is MC Devastator. Hello? Hello? You there? Chapter the Architect? I still been calling? No phone calls received? No nothing? You know who you're talking to? You talking to MC Devastator. Do everything. King of all kings. A.K.A. Turkey Love, a.k.a. Holiday Special. I got something for you, man. I keep spitting the illest, and you just don't listen. You disregard everything I say, everything. So I got something for you. And it's going to be a little Christmas jingle for you. You hear me? 
And when you hear this, my presidents will be there. Jingle bells, dookie smells, I eat deviled eggs. Turkey legs, I don't bake, even raccoon tails. Yeah! Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. I told you, I told you, I told you. I told you I was the truth. You got to understand that, baby. I got my visions, and you need to see through my eyes. Do I need to say more? Put me on, baby. Put me on. Yeah. 100. I don't care what you think, but you better put me on. My family relying on this, my dog. My family. It's Christmas time. DJ Architect. Architect. Architect.